welcome back, it's in Clever and Smart, and today we are going to be making a small scale replica of one of the best looking masking units of all time, the Brunswick Astroline Star Shield. Before we begin, we will have to look at how the Star Shield masking unit works, and what materials we will need to make one for ourselves. The Star Shield is made up of a lower part and an upper part, with the upper part housing the star of the show, literally. So the first piece of material we are going to need is this sheet of acrylic. These are commonly used as light diffusers for fluorescent lights, but there are many kinds of them. Rob over at Garage Bowling Alley recently installed a custom single lane star shield in his garage, and he sent me a picture of how the acrylic material should look. And after some research, I managed to find this Swedish website that sells a very similar 3mm thick sheet. I suggest you google for pyramid pattern acrylic to find similar sheets around the world. I link the Swedish website down below if anyone is interested. Anyways, the special property of this acrylic is that point lights will create these stars automatically. Let me demonstrate by using the flashlight on my phone. You can see that the star size depends on how far away the light is. Let's keep that in mind. The next material we're going to need is an assortment of LED lights in different colors, as well as a basic electronic start kit. These usually include a breadboard and some resistors. I'll go into detail about these shortly. Then we also need some black cardboard or thick paper, black electrical tape, wiring, a piece of transparent acrylic, a glue gun, a few sheets of colored plastic, and some 3 cm wide cable trunking. Excuse me if I forgot about something, it's quite a lot of stuff. Let's turn our attention to the pattern of the stars. If you want a real life inspiration, I'd suggest looking at the sky at night. You might as well find the perfect combination. I started by designing a graphic for the entire star shield, including the bottom part where I've gone with a classic crown symbol as a strike light. I then made this wiring diagram to help me understand how everything goes together. It's time for a disclaimer. I'm not a professional, okay? I'm still learning, so take this information with a grain of salt. I've calculated the value of the resistors using Ohm's law. Each of the LED couples get their own resistor. Don't mix LEDs of different colors when they share a resistor. LEDs aren't created equally. Also, look up the voltage and current draw of your LEDs to calculate your resistor values. They probably won't be the same as mine. I then proceeded to test this setup only to find that the white LEDs were way too bright. I increased the resistor values for them to compensate until all LEDs have the desired brightness. Here's the final test. It may look a bit messy, but that's mainly because of how crowded the LEDs sit. Everything looks good, so let's start working on the housing for this. First, I cut the cable trunking cover into four pieces. This will be the sides going all around the masking unit. I also cover them in black electrical tape since that looks better to me. I then cut two pieces of acrylic, one for the top section and one for the bottom section. The bottom section needs clear acrylic, since the symbols shouldn't look like stars here. Then we cut the cardboard to size and get a poking tool. Then it's time for some poking around. When we've finished poking around for fun, we poke holes into the cardboard for the LEDs to sit in. Then we put the LEDs in place. I use this thicker piece of cardboard on the back to strengthen the construction. This also allowed me to place some LEDs between the two layers of the cardboard, to make them stick out further than the rest. This way, some stars will look smaller than others. I used some hot glue to attach the LEDs, and some dividers that will help the light not to go outside of its area. The resistors can sit at the bottom part of the masking unit, since these areas would otherwise be empty anyways. I made sure to arrange them in a way that made sense. I then soldered them all together and tested the connections. This was actually my first mistake. Don't connect them all to the same ground as I did. When I later tested this, the ball lights and strike lights didn't want to light up properly, since they required their own ground, probably because of the voltage difference. I tested the 12 volt part and it all worked. Now it's time for the frame of the masking unit. Let's drill a hole into one of the cable trunkings 
to fit a 12 volt female connector to. After attaching the second wall, I realized that the bright white inside of the trunking would reflect a lot of unwanted light, so I proceeded to add some more black cardboard to prevent that. Then it was time to prepare the ball light and strike light area. I carefully cut out the symbols from this printed paper, with another sheet of black cardboard underneath. I then used several small pieces of transparent colored plastic to act as lenses for the symbols. The ball lights are supposed to be some kind of turquoise, so I used some green and blue sheets for that. I glued it all in place and continued by closing up the rest of the masking unit with the other pieces of the cable trunking. I also added the connectors for the ball lights and the strike light next to the 12 volt connectors. After realizing my mistake about the ground issue, I also added the ground connection here. Now it's time to see it all in action! That was an amazing experience for me, and the end result came out even better than I would have imagined. Thanks a lot for watching, and see you in the next video.